came out. It mm -hmm. is the wherever Yangon isn't. So they're all the way up in Kameski. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't work like that, Keith. Like, I haven't pointed it out just about yet, but I were starting things off by talking about, you know, Access Red 1, they're not playing this game. Somebody's going to take uh, Sanaska military base. And we're already seeing the a infinity. huge flock yeah. of crowd already in the island. Now, I like this because that tells you this team, they are efficient. Like, if you go back to respective country leagues, they're like, yeah, let's take a sweet time. Let's take five minutes before we get into phase one. When you see a circle like this, you can't dilly dally at all. Yeah, it's. I mean, you're dealing with choke points here, right? Anyone could easily occupy that entrance or exit, and you're going to be in trouble. So you have to make the move on quick, and I see a lot of teams do that. But here's the thing. W will that gamble pay off for them? What if it hard shifts towards the mainland, and now they're trapped inside now three teams over at South Snofka? Well, either you get the boat, or you just swim, or you just... Give up. <laughs> but I, I guess swimming nobody's going to give up here. <laughs> swimming no is, is basically giving up. You're, you're just putting yourself on the line, right? Sometimes you basically have no other options. I, I guess that we've seen some Michael Phelps going out the waters. Yeah. Um, of course, now that we're in Southeast Asia, there's a lot of great swimmers, great divers from different nations out there. And this time around, let, let's take a look at Team Secret. Okay. Like, we have not highlighted this team way too much. You know, this basically is the team that's represented Malaysia the most mm. and has been in ma all these major tournaments in PUBG Mobile since the start of the competitive circuit. And I absolutely think that with all these uh, fresh faces that they're introducing, or like Kid, who's basically taking over Yu High Boy's duty as the main marksman of the team. And I think that he's actually doing a really good job at the moment. Not to say to fully replace your high boy, but to hold his own and say that I'm not part of his shadow. I'm creating a name for myself. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can't c uh, compare apples to apples. I mean, mm. <laughs> they're not apples to apples in this sense because Yuhai has a different play style. He's a bit more aggressive than Kid. I guess Kid is the kind of guy who plays the smart, he takes the smart engagement and he usually comes out on top. But we've seen him clutch for the side of Team Secret uh, often times over, many times over uh, throughout his entire career with this team right now. And this, this young fella is going to PMGC, so that's something to shout about. Indeed, and when we look into teams that have already qualified, right? You got this is Dogma, who currently hasn't been able to show us like the biggest of play throughout this week. But last week, I think that they've been able to, of course, wow some of the audience who may have just seen them for the very first time. But if you've been watching them throughout the PMPL Indonesia region, it, their consistency basically commands respect, even from the top teams of Indonesia. Yeah, uh, I think they're they're up there alongside, and they made it through because of the accumulation of points in season three, right? So, mm -hmm. so congr kudos to them um, for the the four teams that will be confirmed to go on to PMGC. Another four slots <laughs> to fight for here. Three coming in from the top three from the championship, and obvi obviously top one of this entire Super Weekend runs after week three will also get a slot to PMGC. So that's one thing to consider. That's right. And it's also odd to also uh, speak about this. Bigger Tron Raid aliens will need to fight harder than they did as compared to the past seasons because they don't get that PMGC yeah. uh, uh, privilege uh, for that direct ticket into the global tournament that's expected to be happening in a uh, you know, few months to come. Or it might just be sooner than expected. Of course, you guys can... Keep up to date with the latest news so long as you follow PUBG Mobile on your social platforms. So, RRQ, this is another Indonesian team that is definitely worth mentioning. Yesterday, you were uh, starting off with the point that, hey, they didn't seem like they performed. This is a definitely a huge banner, which we know and love for a long time. Back then, it was RRQ Athena. It was a Thai flag that's under the RRQ name. This time around, of course, it's the sister team, or should I say brother team, mm -hmm. sailing from Indonesia back then. You have seen them in Southeast Asia League, where they were known just Ryu. But you, 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 you've you known all these names like Nepico. They can clutch out situations uh, when they need to first push and shove. 
now that they are pretty far away, I definitely think that it's hard to even you know, call out what's going to happen in the next few minutes because teams are just basically rotating by and the team that will have to worry is four rivals because this is a late rotation coming out. And when I say late, this is just eight minutes, mm -hmm. right? Eight minutes in the normal context, you guys are still basically being Loot. goblin looting yeah. all around. So don't add them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but D Xavier also one of those who's already confirmed their slots in the PMGC. Uh, also doing pretty hot in week number one, I guess, Super Weekend. Currently standing on top with 170 total points and one chicken dinner under their name. And you just mentioned four rivals. Who is second to that? So, D, but currently in week number two, it, it doesn't seem like D Xavier is playing at their 100. Sure enough, they're just playing for qualifying uh, qualifications for the top 16. But hey, wouldn't you like to show a little more than the, what they have been so far, though? Yeah, probably they will have to just show everything that they've got, and especially when you have so much stakes on the line. You know, like we're talking about dollars here. Mm -hmm. Lots of juicy cash price that's basically lying in wait. So with the brand new update of the new phase, it appears that the circle will hard commit to the island. Very slim chance for it to be ending up in yep. between the river. Uh, those are the best circles, by the way. I hate it. Uh, you hate it. <laughs> I love to watch it. I like to see challenges and oh. challenges. Looks he gets dropped from the buggy and Frankie goes ahead to take him down for first blood and it's due to claim that first point. Just when we were talking about D Xavier, they're just here to prove me wrong. First hand hawk, now D Xavier, what else can I be wrong at? <laughs> Hoping to find out here, so. Everything's going in reverse, my friend. Yep, VPE, Ravenclaw has got themselves close towards the bridge entrance here, but APG occupying the gas station. Do they look to cross? Surely they have to. Meanwhile, God Tooney has been sniping down the likes of BTR. They tagged him a little bit, did a little bit of damage, a lot actually, onto Zuxi, but not not finished the job just yet, so it still will be fine on the side of Big Bigatron. They can heal themselves just fine. And Gatini still opening up suppressive shots on towards Zuxi. And it's kind of sad to see that Luxie just basically uh, got dropped out from the vehicle just like that oh. kid, though. <laughs> uh, dropped out in a very different way. Nobody seemed to take him out but himself. Gatini. Brings out the M4, and yeah, little accidents definitely require some assistance, and you gotta have somebody to jumpstart those vehicles. But you got jumper out there, you both know actually tanking the blue zone. Wait, they're all running out of resources. He's only down the bandages. I don't oh, think that no. kid could survive. Uh, you just leave him alone, and I guess he's done for. <laughs> Funny enough, this happens to a lot of Malaysian teams. <laughs> I don't know. It shouldn't happen. <laughs> right. It's phase two, guys. <laughs> Why do they not have enough mats? I I wonder. I really do wonder. Yeah. It, it's weird. Geek fam oh, I held the title. It, it, and if now you were telling me, secret. if you were telling me that they try to book the circle as soon as possible, coming from Severny, I get it. But they've been lurking around there. They've been taking their time to loot, and they didn't find anything. It's either pure bad luck that you don't have those resources or you're just basically eating up too much time to get right by. Now it's already phase two. It's definitely going to hurt a tad bit. And I don't know what to make of that dire situation. Jumper is driving all alone. Oh. And he's going to be having one sec just to say hello to him. So this cove is oh. going to be absolutely off limits. Shots being fired. Jumper has got to make a different uh, segue. Or should I just say a different term? Easily said, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, we, it's, uh, it's up to us to come up with fancy words. <laughs> you know, it makes us think like we know what's going on. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, Geek Fam. I know what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge fight, apparently. Oh, gets tagged down. APG coming from somewhere, not being showed in a match here. Uh, but he takes down one member of Geek Fam. And now Jumper, as he has got a rough start, losing Kid so what? soon, but Kid. He takes down the kill on the MSC, actually turns this one around. We thought they were dead for sure. Well, speaking of which, I think you kind of jinxed it there. <laughs> a jumper still hanging on, though. He's on his knees as Pop 
did pop a grenade, and this is where they will fly by the corner of the broken walls. Pop. Crossy actually snapped it back at the side of Kit, but Jumper is still lying in wait. They cannot take way too long. Pawns now getting tapped by Matoy from long range. Bring out that mini 14, and he finds a little bit of a glimpse over on the pop. He gets one bullet down, second one to follow, and he needs another one to take. Pop off his feet. He gets a little bit more of that cover, but Matoy can afford to reposition. Uh -oh. There is more shots flying in the wing, and it's Ponzai that trades right back. Matoy, outside of the blue zone here, has to move forward, and he has to heal up. He cannot afford to waste any more time on the outskirts, and Ponzai, he has to plan, plan ahead because this is going to shrink deeper and deeper into the island, and Team Secret will have to just basically run for the hills. Oh no. Oh, it looks like they're dead. They're getting pinned down by Yangon Galacticos who has occupied this high ground uh, far earlier than anyone have. The nades been Ooh. tossed in, does not connect. They'll be hidden behind uh, OPAC objects right now, obstacles and, well, barricades, but they are on their knees, so they're just as good as dead at this point. Only taking down to the blue zone, but man, this is only the first part of the problem. The circle is closing in, and they still have yet to cross the bridge. All right, if you were to be Yangon Galacticos here, probably you have very little options left. Either you cut into the Western Bridge or take whatever vehicle, dive it into the river, <laughs> yeah. and just start swimming. But they're definitely coming up with option A. So they have to boost her up, and it's definitely problematic for Team Secret. Now they only have one player left. Like, they chose to commit to MS Chambri. They didn't finish the fight, and they know that there's no way that they can go in towards the Eastern Bridge. So, taking a U-turn isn't exactly viable. Matoy now, <laughs> the sole surviving member who's currently in the water, and they're following Plan B, as I said. Well, I guess he has to. He's the single member left alive. His team secrets, hopes, and dreams carry it around his back. Hopefully, it's not too heavy that he sinks here on his way onto the next island. By the way, I'm curious to see what the other teams would take because as we saw, even Geek Fam hasn't crossed the bridge just yet. APG and Yangon Galacticos too. Now, MSC Chambury will have to make the swim but for rivals. April, surely he sees the car. He knows that people will make that attempt. But the problem is he doesn't really know who else is up above him. But Vampire Esports, they hurt and they smell blood. They take down Mila. It's an easy deletion with basically a goon squad running at them. Now, going back to the side of Vampire Esports, they will still lose two stops though. Got Tuni coming in with the taps from long range by the hangar. And I just love it. The Infinity. They are so proactive, and they have all eyes in the Solanka military base, but they will have to budge off to move into the western sector, where you have two hills that divides this highway. So this is getting trickier and trickier, and honestly, it's hard to tell. Whoever currently playing in the battlefield, it doesn't seem like anybody has a clear lead. Yeah, but on papers, it should have been Infinity since they had first mover's advantage. But yeah, Vampire Esports take down one of their member. Now that evens the odds, I guess, a little bit. RRQ Ryu, though, also one of those teams that has a huge reputation about behind their back. Currently shooting against VGM. Uh, it's Porsche within the vicinity. Oh, I don't want to see this car starts revving really soon because we know that they have... Uh, they. The, the people with car names in Vietnam seems to be like stars. That's in right. Place. They just love to go fast and furious. <laughs> and, you know, they're a bunch of family uh, that always sticks together. Family. Yeah. <laughs> Got the reference there. I see what you did there. Meanwhile, in the water, swimming right across and right next to each other. It's four rivals and MSC. You want to? Is that a good idea to be swimming with sharks? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a good one. <laughs> you definitely don't want to swim around with ponds eye around, but this is an ocean instead of a pond. Team Secret, first team to fall out, and a drive by comes in. My oh my, 20, yes, is basically just trying to eliminate people off with the curse, but it's going to be zero with the points alongside with Onyx. Man, that looks way too casual. Mm -hmm. So I guess more Fast and Furious references are on the way, but I'll keep it as that. Well, YG, 
They try to continue with this dominance as they have found their way into the island. This is an open playing ground for many, and Ponzai gets taken off by Geek Fam, and basically they have shot down the shark as they sink down the sea. Yeah, now Young and Galacticos to join with Death of a Planet. It causes a black hole, they say, and phase. Corby just did browsing across. The entire field he here, that, surely he saw that. I think he's looking for more. Uh, he's getting covered, though, but he's yep. fighting off against the rest of Yago Galacticos. Now he's looking for AK as well. Sharpshooting, poor pie will secure kills and take out the entirety of Yango Galacticos. And furthermore, just look at him go, saving the day as Corpi will just go into rescue Venturis. It is so good for FaZe Clan. They went up against the entire squad of Younger Galacticals and not even lose a member. They couldn't so even confident. secure. Yeah, they couldn't. No, they couldn't even secure the kill onto FaZe. So Younger Galacticals again gets pushed down to the bottom. Yeah, and you just look at Corpai. He's swift as the coursing reaper. Now, I know. <laughs> is that a Mulan reference? <laughs> uh, well... Since you asked, yes it is. <laughs> <laughs> Circle going directly into the junction. Now, I'm surprised none of the teams are within some of these sectors here. I expected many of them to be taking the compound. There's only one of the teams that's doing so over on the southern end. While Onyx basically got some good covers going on. Anchor PUBG though is hiding by the corners of the hill. Now trying to take on the rest of four rivals who's basically got two options here. Either you fight FaZe Clan or you fight Anchor PUBG. I think they just want to march up ahead against Anchor PUBG if given an option. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a no doubt decision, but also Anchor PUBG just took out Bigatron earlier on. Right. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to be as simple as we thought it would have. Definitely not. And you see, you know, back in the early, early days of PUBG Mobile, everyone kind of underestimated the power of wildcard teams. And just look, every season they come back stronger than ever. And Anchor PUBG currently holding the vantage point right above the hill. And it's going to be four rivals here that's going to be coming in, charging forward. And they don't really have vehicles to book out of that as compared to Anchor PUBG. Yeah, the closer you get to us, yeah, we're just going to slowly edge you out and get this gatekeeping going on. So, for rivals, just have to just play it extremely slowly or try to gate crash it. Yeah, so there are a lot of saying that goes around. Like, I think some pro players, even in the scene of wildcard, they said that Anchor PUBG, if they are given the circle, they can really play it. And right now, they're having the circle instead of trying to push in. So if any game that they're supposed to pop off, this should be it. Already currently four kills in their name, matching the likes of FaZe. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if any game is going to be their game, this should be it. Yeah, and of course, we got a lot of interviews with Anchor PUBG as of late. And they've been telling us a lot of all these great stories out there. This is going to be Daybot there going with those exchanges with Logan. Taking down that member right across just as Dogma basically will just be happily <laughs> taking that exchange. Or well, they can still save their uh, Breton right across. Another team will falter as it makes it to the top ten nine here. FaZe Clan now charging up the grenade, taking on RRQ that's going to be just across the hills. And that's going to chip a little bit of uh, health coming in from inside of Morn. Yeah, a lot of fights that's happening here as the circle closes in level 5. Circle, yeah, a, APG gets shot down. Tony K again aiming sights onto RRQ, who's down in the low ground. But APG will be here to third party those kills. They have to be secured. Otherwise, it's just a wave. Now, RRQ will be able to probably get the res on Mort. Meanwhile, FaZe behind the tree line doesn't seem too hot for himself. Only one member left for FaZe. VGM tries to play the rocks here, tries to outplay RRQ and get the fire on through, but it doesn't seem like he's coming out on top. No, RRQ, this man is 1v3, the, the entire VGM. They crumble with the support coming out from RRQ in the back end. Asa, though, he casually just heals up. He knows that D 
these guys are basically toes. VGM members basically crawling right by, but they still have a nerd player that's going to be surviving, and this is where they start to clean up house. Five frags looking for six, and there you have it. They managed to get one, but the frags coming out of nowhere will take them down on the ground, and thank goodness for Nepical, they will still be around. V Gaming, a top eight finish. They are definitely climbing up the ladder, but they definitely need a little bit more kills than that as we proceed here. RRQ currently achieving that seven points to match up against FaZe Clan. But look at Encore PUBG. We mentioned that if they have circle, they can play their way in. Currently still four members standing. They push us into the compound here. Encore PUBG wants to take out NFT. They take one member down on his knees, but can they do get more here? Drawn just waiting down hiding behind the wall, the brick wall here. Can they make it something happen? Flippy tosses a grenade, grenade into the window, does clip onto Shroud, and that would reveal his location. Does not get the kill just yet. Flippy finally shows himself. He's got to be careful. On the top end, he does have support coming in, but they do not see him. He gets tagged a little bit, oh, clipped boy. by the water tank, and that will be a dire mistake here. But in the back end, it seems like they're retaliating against APG now down with two members on their knees, trying to go for the res. 20, definitely have clutched some of all these situations. Now it's up to Drone here. They need to actually find a little bit of opening. He tries to cook up a nade, and every member of Acropunctu is right down below. He finds the angle, he chips out the health, but not enough to basically burn them off this one oh, He hops down, he shot. finds 20, now he's gonna clutch it up. Oh, oh. my word, he clears up G. Now it's down to the top four, and FT makes it through the cut. Great attempt by Encore PUBG, though, securing themselves seven kills under their name. So they just tied it up in terms of kill for RRQ and FaZe at the very least. So some signs of life going on their way, but RRQ still well in doubt here. Playing the fields, it seems like they might just lose Asa, uh, being in such an open area, but Infinity two members they can do a lot of damage hiding behind smokes but all the molotovs all the throwables going down their way asa killed that clip oh, no. though oh he's going to burn his way down but no yeah it's very very close uh, there oh, you go. Uh, eventually <laughs> that one bullet did clip on from got Tuni. it's basically two thai region uh, teams versus two Indonesian teams. Yeah. Now let's set this one up for that finale that we've been waiting for. Nepico, he does restock from the body of his fallen ally. Oh. But here comes the push. Infinity wants this kill and they will eventually get it. Here comes the Molotov and it's not needed. Jeffs, <laughs> he stole it away. Yeah, he got shot in the back. <laughs> it seems that Infinity tried to go and capitalize the moment, but got stolen in place by Onyx Esports, who still have all members remaining on their end and a circle to play around with. Now, Infinity, they have to push in. So, uh, Onyx, they have every advantage in the world, including a compound. Yeah. I'm not too sure how would Grown actually play this one now. He is basically a solo unit. Now the shots that are being fired from the compound has alerted not only members of the side of Onyx, but also Infinity, who's basically up the hill. Now look at Senbei. He's coming up with a really huge flank. He sees Gatuni. He will hunt out for him. And only half of it actually connect. He will switch it up and the UMP will bring him down. Yeah, he nearly wasted his opportunity there. He missed a couple of shots. That could have been a bullet going his way, and that would have ended his sneak attack here. But now, Infinity, only one member remaining. It seems that someone's pushing into compound, and it's not Infinity. Infinity, news, he though, one. finds the guy lurking around, but it's NFT that's keeping them at bay. One member up against the three, but he's spreading them down by the staircase. They will up out with the numbers, though. So that goes the way of Onyx with now still at least three members against the one of Infinity. It's Newsy trying to drive his way right behind covers here. It's the tree line. The sea skies on his knees. Onyx, they're losing members one after another. It is very doable. Two versus one. Knowing that one is inside a compound, there's very limited angles that they can actually work with. But look at the vehicle. It's smoking up. If Newsy sticks too close, they can just basically come in to burn it up. But the grenade connects and it does chunk out some of these health coming out of Newsy. They should be able to go in for the revive, and if this one comes off, 
it basically is a tree versus one in favor of Onyx to be able to basically pincer him out of the play zone. Oh, blows up the vehicular that brought him there. That is one heck of a Trojan horse. Onyx, they 